Okay, we need to talk about polyprotic acids. What this means is this is an acid that has more than one H plus to donate. So for example, phosphoric acid has three protons that, come up, that can come off. They don't all come off in one fell swoop. You get progressive removal of each of them. What that means is each proton as it comes off yields a different Ka. So removing the first proton from H3PO4, basically throw this in water, one proton will come off and you'll form H2PO4 minus, because it has lost one proton, and you form an H3O plus, just like a typical Ka reaction. Um, the Ka for this is 7.1 times 10 to the negative third. Despite being a weak acid, this is a reasonably large Ka. Okay. Um, I don't know, it's about a couple hundred times more than acetic acid, vinegar. Okay. But this thing, which is the conjugate base in this reaction, also has protons that can come off. So in theory, this molecule by itself, if, we're, if it reacted with water, could also lose a proton and become HPO4 2 minus, form an H3O plus, and get its own Ka value. But you'll notice this Ka value is about 10 to the fifth times smaller. That means for every so if you had both of these reactions going on at the same time, in other words, if you threw this in water, for about every 10,000 of these, you would get maybe one of these, approximately. We're just talking orders of magnitude here, but 10 to the fifth is about 10,000, okay? So, the same thing is true of the next one. So this also still has a proton on it. It can undergo this also, undergo this process. It also has a Ka, which is about 10 to the fifth of that. So, what this really means for us is that even though this thing has three protons to dissolve or to dissociate, is that re in reality, you're only going to get the first one coming off if you throw this in water. Because for every 10,000 of these, you only get one of these, which means its impact on the pH is, is going to be absolutely negligible. And this is such a small value that this reaction is more likely to go backwards. And every time you produce one of these, Le Chatelier's principle is going to push this reaction backwards, which stops it from going to the next step. This reaction at the bottom is, is 10,000 times less likely to happen than this one, and this one's 10,000 times less likely to happen than this one. So in reality, even though it has three protons, it only matters if you're doing a titration. So under neutral conditions, basically in water, you'll only get the first reaction. This is in the yellow copy of the notes. Okay. Um, if you add a base to this, a base will pull this out of solution. Like if you're doing a titration, if you add a strong base, it's going to remove this or this or this, and it's gonna pull all the reactions to the right even though their Ka values may get progressively terrible. So in other words, if you take H3PO4 and you add NaOH to it or KOH, a strong base, what'll happen is we don't even care what the Ka values are. Essentially, you'll get all three protons off. So these Ka values matter if you're just throwing it in water. The, but, okay, let me summarize again. So if you have H3PO4 thrown in water, the first Ka value matters. You would do an ice method problem for this first reaction and you'd basically ignore the presence of these other two. If you're doing a titration, both of, or all three of these matter and you'll get all three protons and three equivalents of H3O plus formed. So really this looks more complicated than it really is. If you're doing like a, hey, what is the pH of this polyprotic acid? You would just basically do the first equation, you'd get one proton and you would do it just like any of the other weak acids that we've seen up to this point. The only time it really matters is if you're doing a titration. Titrations are going to give, are going to rip off all three equivalents, all three protons, and it's going to ignore these Ka values.